Yo, what is going on? You're checking out QJHQ. My name is Chris and welcome back to the channel. The time is finally here for my 2023 desk setup tour. This has been a long time in the making. Uh, literally, my last tour was like 2020. So I've moved states. I'm in a brand new studio. We built this entire place out and I will share the entire studio in a tour later on. But right now, this is my entire desk setup. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy it. It was a lot of work and hard dedication that went into making this. And the whole point of this is to help inspire other people or creators out there or anyone who just comes along this video, uh, maybe give you some ideas on what you could use or maybe give me some feedback on what you like or don't like. Uh, all that being said, if I miss anything, please down below in the comments, let me know. I will link it to you. And everything I do speak about will be in the video description as well if you're interested in seeing anything or picking anything up. Uh, all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Give it a like and subscribe if you do. Uh, all right, let's get into it. This is my dream desk setup tour for 2023. Let's start with the desk. I knew I wanted a large desk to fit this studio as I spend hours here from testing and reviewing products to just everyday gaming. And I do plan on streaming here in the very near future. This is a completely custom desk that my father and I built. The top is a Formica laminate. It's a very forgiving material, so it won't scratch easy. And it's also very easy to clean. Now I knew I wanted a white and black accented theme, but I didn't want it to be so plain. So I opted for this white marble swirl color and I could not be happier. It matches the studio and just helps tie everything together super nicely. Now the desk itself sits on these wood beams that are attached to the back wall and these two black metal legs that I grabbed off of Amazon. Now these metal legs are sold in many different shapes and sizes and they are pretty inexpensive. I believe the pair of these legs was like somewhere under $150. On the sides of the desk, I added these two small white bookshelves to give the desk some more life as well as giving me some added space to display my vinyl art and statues. If you couldn't tell, I'm heavily addicted to collecting all types of things here. Now, I won't go into too much detail on the figures. If you do want to know more, just check the description for links or ask me down below in the comments if you have any questions. But these top two rows, these figures are called Tech 63s and they're from one of my favorite artists known as Quix. And the last shelf here are the Looney Tunes smile figures from the artist known as Ron English. Uh, actually, these Looney Tunes were actually gifted to me, which is pretty cool. So let's go on to the lighting that I have on these shelves. The lighting here on these shelves is from Amazon as well. They are these little countertop LEDs and they have some adhesive stickers and they're sold in packs of four. You can control these colors and effects with the included remote. And these lights are not individually controlled. So one color and effect will mimic on all four lights. Now I'm okay with that as I usually keep them white. So I stuck three from the included pack here on this bookshelf. I then purchased a really cheap extender cable and I ran it under my desk to the other bookshelf where I placed the very last light. Now on this bookshelf, I decided to remove the wood shelves and I had some custom glass shelves made from a local hardware store. So the one light above can shine through and illuminate my display. I do also get some help from the across RGB floodlight that I have placed below my second PC. I absolutely adore Pokemon and I hope you do too. These are the one-to-one -one die cast Pokeball replicas from the Wan company. This is currently the entire lineup and I don't know what I'm going to do when the next Pokeball drops. So uh, I guess you guys can give me some ideas down below in the uh, comments and don't say stop buying because I can't. Let's start with the back paneling. These are 3D wall panels that you've probably seen in a different rendition or two at some point if you've seen other desk tours. They're also found on Amazon and they are extremely inexpensive for what you're actually getting. I believe I paid somewhere around like 70 bucks for 12 panels. They are really easy to cut if you need to. Just grab some Gorilla Glue and you can sit into the back of the wall. Now less is more when it comes to Gorilla Glue, especially with these panels. Trust me, take my word for it. I went with this warped speed looking design here in white. They look amazing once they're all together. They make a really cool looking pattern and it's just a backsplash that pops. I loved it so much. I even grabbed a different design in black for my entertainment center. Right above the panels, I grabbed four IKEA LAC shelves. The rest of this desk setup's lighting is all Govi light products. I chose Govi because they just crush the competition right now. I mean, you get such a wide range of lighting products to choose from at such a better price point. It's almost dumb not to go with Govi. So let's start from the bottom up. Beneath my desk, I installed a 32 foot RGB Govi light strip. These are just stuck to the bottom of my desk with the adhesive that it comes with, and they can easily be cut to adjust the length. 
I usually leave these on white for a nice underglow and to match the side shelving. On top of my desk, you'll see these Govi glides. Now these bars are really cool. They just plug into each other almost like big Legos. And I just have them resting on the back of the desk and they meet right behind my PC. I change these a lot, but lately I like the simple running light look as it gives my setup more movement and life. Moving up right beneath my shelves and where the panels end, I ran Govi's rope lights. This was a great choice as it's thin enough to hide away with great flexibility and vibrancy. It just make for a really great trim lighting that also help bring these panels and shelves together. I usually keep these on a static white and they reflect nice off the white shelves and they give the desk more of an open feel to it. Above that, on top of the shelves, I ran 64 feet of Gobi's RGB light strips this time. I also didn't cut any length, I sort of wrapped it in a circle. This way, the front of the vinyls had some light glowing on them and behind the toys, up on the empty wall space, we had some glow there as well. I really like the way it turned out, and because it's Gobi's RGB light strips, you can change colors on each side. So I kind of keep one side almost like a blue, and the other side might be a purple. I'm always changing that as well. The figures here, again, these are uh, this time Mega Tech 63s by Quix. They're his biggest figure that he makes currently. And in the middle, we have the Quix Ravenger. The tail ends, I have the Voltoras. Those are by Camille Rose Garcia. And on my right side here, I have a Mad Titan. And the left side, we have the Splotch figure. These are from Unruly Industries. So now let's move on to what sits on top of the desk. My bookshelf speakers of choice are the incredible Edifier S880 dBs. Now Edifier sent these out to me a while back and I showed them off on my Instagram. These are a Bluetooth optical coaxial active powered bookshelf speaker. And these things bang for some medium sized speakers. They do have to connect to each other. So I run the wire behind the desk below the glide light. And I love the colors, the white and black with the hint of pine wood. It's a really classy looking, great sounding bookshelf speaker. I love them so much. I even got Edifier's newer R1280 dBs in the back on my minimal desk setup. And I'll give a tour on that soon. On top of the left speaker is a Sank piece from Sank Toys. The all white just matches so well. My sister actually just got this for me as a gift. So shout out to her. And next to the right speaker, I have an Echo Show 8, which I mainly use for voice control here in the studio, as well as tracking my Amazon purchases and so on. Beneath my monitor, I have an Elgato Stream Deck, which I currently mainly use for camera control in between switching scenes when recording. And next to that, we have my TC Helicon Go XLR. This thing is still the goat in my eyes. Midas preamp, four audio channel controls, quick mute, and plenty of voice mods. I have a ton of fun with this, especially when trolling a bit in Valorant. Plugged into this, I have a white Canary XLR cable routed through the Elgato low profile mic arm. This mic arm is just amazing. It is easy to push in and out of the way. It's not hanging down or over me or over some monitor to take up some unnecessary space with this magnetic cover on top that keep the cable snug and hidden away. It's just a sleek design and it's the best I've used thus far. Now I have this drilled and mounted into my desk, though it does come with an optional desk clamp if you didn't want to go through all of that. But this way for me, it's more permanent and I'm good with this. The mic of choice is the ever so popular Shure SM7B. Zero complaints. Best mic I have ever encountered. It's built like a tank. Sounds beautiful. I mean, you be the judge. I'm using it right now for this video. The headphones I'm rocking are the Bear Dynamic DT1990 Pros. Now I love the look and feel of these headphones. Fully equipped with a soft headband and super soft ear pads that make for longer studio sessions way more comfortable. 250 ohms, 45 millimeter dynamic Tesla drivers that deliver incredible crisp and accurate sound quality. Whether you're gaming, working, or just relaxing listening to some music, these headphones truly deliver. To the left of the desk, I have these two pegboards mounted to the attic door, and behind them I also added a Gobi light strip. Now I really love the way this turned out, as it was not only a clever way to get use out of this really large awkward looking door, but it clears up some shelf space and I can display some of my favorite pieces of tech that I can quickly swap out from time to time. Now the pegboard and hooks were purchased from Amazon and they were also fairly cheap. Now above the door, I have my Qgen HQ logo. This was made for me by my buddy Gamja, AKA Dan On and his amazing business partner. They run House Letter Signs. They are a Canadian company that specializes in interior and exterior signs. And I do believe that they ship worldwide. So if you want your very own custom sign, hit them up using the link below and tell them that Chris from Qgen HQ sent you for 5% off of your very first order. The next three items that you see here change legit on a monthly basis. As you know, I review a ton of tech here on the channel. My desk pad right now is the Yaku Bushi desk pad from Mech and Company. I hope I did not butcher that name. I believe that stands for Baseball Warrior in Japanese. 
Uh, do not quote me on that. I grabbed this in the black and white monochrome and I have the full color as well. These are just gorgeous desk pads. Super soft with slight bounce to them and they have a great glide to them as well. My current mouse is the Final Mouse Tens Edition in medium. Final Mouse really crushed it with this collab and this actual mouse. It's the best I've used since the Phantom. The magnesium shell with the great color scheme here. Super responsive sensor, it is close to perfect. My current keyboard is the Kaboom Phantom 81 Crystal. I recently reviewed this keyboard not too long ago and it keeps making its way back to my desk. It is one of the best pre-builds I've used currently at this time. The crystal switches are satisfying to use. The gasket mounted build is nice. That helps with soft acoustics. And the RGB is just an absolute knockout. It is hard not to love this keyboard. My coil USB-C cable is a custom cable from Calamity Cables. This is the Starry Night version. I had to have this as the purple and white just matches my branding. It was a must have. Now I added a nice shimmer to this as well and it came out very nice. It was well worth the wait. Oh, and this right here, this is a USB charged desk vacuum. It's under 25 bucks. If you take anything away from this video, buy this desk vacuum. It's a monster value for what it does. It lasts forever. The charge just does, it doesn't die. I don't know, mine doesn't die. And it's a one button on and off and it just helps keep your desk tidy. Well worth the 20, 25 bucks. So let's talk about my screen real estate. On my left side here, I have an older 34 inch LG. This is a 75 hertz IPS panel. Though I don't recommend this for main use, it's great for vertical use. It's super affordable because it's older and it's amazing to read longer threads and comments. And then IPS panel just makes an ease on your eyes. It's perfect. My top monitor is an older 144 hertz Asus 24 inch. This is a 1080p monitor. I use this for something like quick videos or just to kind of monitor other applications. My main screen here, this is the Samsung G7. This beast of a monitor is a 1440p, one millisecond response time, 240 hertz monitor. With a slight curve to it. Now I opted for the 32 inch as the curve can make this look a tiny bit smaller, but I have no complaints. Great color, super vibrant, and I just get absolutely immersed in this panel. It was worth every penny. On top of this panel, I sit a Red Dragon light bar. This thing can change color from warm to cold, has amazing brightness, and it really comes in clutch when I need some extra desk light. Super affordable too, somewhere under like 30 bucks, I believe. Now on to the PC itself. This is my most recent build, and I had to go for the all white theme here as well. I grabbed the Leon Lee 011 Evo Snow White Edition case. This is a huge improvement from the original 011. It's just really easy to work in. It's easy to clean in as well due to that magnetic panel. The Leon Lee Unifans, I have nine of them. These are the SL120s, these daisy chain, which make assembly a breeze. And the lighting isn't over the top. These are sharp looking fans, but I would like to upgrade to the new Infinity fans at some point. I have the Leon Lee V2 strimmers, the 24 pin for the motherboard and the 38 pins for the GPU. I have these overlapping. The newer version is a huge upgrade to the originals as well. My GPU is the Asus Strix 3080 White Edition. I have no complaints here, and this will be my card until I can find a matching white 4 series. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 T4 Extreme RGB RAM, clocked in at 3600 megahertz. I have two terabytes of Samsung's 980 Pro M.2, as well as a 500 gigabyte M.2 and an older one terabyte attached to the backside. I have an 850 watt EVGA power supply, an i9 12900K CPU, and the Asus ROG Strix Z690A gaming motherboard. The Corsair H150i Elite Capellix AIO with the add-on LCD screen for monitoring temps or just dropping a logo. Now the screen on the back side is a seven inch screen that I mounted to the back of the case that I used to fill up some dead space and it gives the PC some more life to it. Now this screen is only sold in black. So I grabbed some white vinyl and I just kind of taped off the sides. And that's exactly what I did with the piece down here on the bottom as well. This is the Elgato Camlink Pro. This is an internal camera capture card that enables me to have multiple HDMI camera controlled at once. For instance, right now, uh, this controls my studio camera and my desk camera. The studio camera is the AI360 Link camera. And the one behind me is my older Sony A5100 mirrorless camera. Oh, and above the PC, that's the Davoom Pixu 64. This thing's pretty cool. You can drop all types of 8-bit animations and art pulled right off the free application. And you can even find some counter clocks for things like games, stats, YouTube count, Twitch count, and so on. I just mounted it to the top of the shelf. 
Now Navoon set this out a while back and I'm glad I was able to incorporate it into my studio. It's one of the coolest little devices that I have here. All this extra room to my right, well, this is for fun activities. This is where you might catch me building a new keyboard or grabbing some quick product shots. In the back here, I just hold two extra keyboards on this acrylic keyboard stand. And one right now, this is actually my first ever custom built keyboard. I built this thing years ago. This is the Rama M60A with GMK Phantom caps. I absolutely adore this keyboard. Some people out there did not like it, but it was my first build ever. I was damn proud of it and it will stay with me forever. Uh, over here to the right, I have some Sank figures on a display case. Sank is also one of my favorite artists of all time. And here is my Prime One Studio exclusive Griffith Falcon of the Light statue. I'm a huge Berserk fan. If you haven't watched or read it, do so now. I highly recommend it. On to my chair. Well, my chair is the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2. I used to love this chair. It's just, I don't know, it's seen better days. It's still pretty comfortable, but it's way past due and I need an upgrade badly. This thing starts to squeak a little bit and the arm cushion, well, it's just dying on me. This chair sits on top of a glass floor pad from Vitraza. This is absolutely clutch because you don't tear up the comfy carpet and because it's glass, you can roll with ease. I don't have to deal with any of those cheap plastic ones that just roll up and tear over time. So that is my latest desk setup tour. I really hope you guys out there enjoyed it. Uh, this took a ton of time and dedication. And again, all my day one subscribers have been asking for the updated tour. I'm happy I was able to deliver this today and hopefully uh, you guys do enjoy it. Um, if you take anything away from this video besides the vacuum, uh, it's the whole point of this is to help inspire people out there who are either creating their own studio, their own desk setup or workstation or whatever you're doing. I don't care how old you are, uh, there's no time better than now. And if you really want this, you can achieve it. You don't need to have everything here. I didn't buy this overnight. This stuff came throughout time, um, every piece by piece. I remember my very first monitor and my very first keyboard and mouse. Uh, you know, those things just kind of grew over time. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. You can start anywhere with anything and get where you need to go. So again, I really hope you guys enjoy this. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me. Give the video a huge thumbs up if you liked it and stick around for the very future of the uh, HQ and you will see the full studio tour very, very soon. So that being said, most importantly, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.